Hi, I'm Justin Riley. Today on Wisconsin Doctors, leg ulcers and lymphedema. Some three million Americans are currently suffering from this disease. We're on location at the Wounded Edema Center, part of Fort Healthcare here in Johnson Creek to learn more. And we'll be joined by Dr. Robert Goldman, who is the medical director of the clinic, Angie Adler, who's a lymphedema therapist, and Mary Carvalho, the clinic coordinator. They're gonna talk about some of the causes of lymphedema and leg ulcers, as well as some of the treatments. It's all coming up right here on Wisconsin Doctors. Stay right here. Welcome back to Wisconsin Doctors. We are on location at the Fort Healthcare Wound and Edema Center here in Johnson Creek. And today we're talking about a somewhat fascinating topic, leg ulcers and lymphedema. And I'm joined now by Dr. Robert Goldman, who is the medical director of the Wound and Edema Center. Dr. Goldman, how are you? Pretty good, Justin. How are you doing today? Great. Thanks for having us back. Um, let's talk a little bit for folks who don't know about leg ulcers. What are leg ulcers? And maybe talk a little bit about lymphedema as well. And what, what really is the size and scope of the problem? Right, uh, there is a, it's a big problem. Uh, about 1% of adults uh, in this country have leg ulcers, which is about 3 million people. Uh, it's usually bunched more in the older population, mm -hmm. and they're seen at wound care centers and other places for this problem. But it's a, it's a major problem, and not only in terms of, of pain and suffering and the uh, costs, direct costs of these things, but also in terms of lost wages. It's been estimated at $15 billion dollars uh, this uh, problem, billion with a B, and that's a, a big issue for, for us. Uh, one thing that we have is we are a wound center, there are about 2,500 wound care centers around the country, but it's three million people with ulcers, most of these ulcers and most of these patients are seen not at wound care centers but by other practitioners. The thing which we do and that all practitioners should do is uh, the standard of care, which is compression therapy. And we'll be talking at length through our team today about uh, compression therapy as, as well. So let's talk about what are the causes of leg swelling or edema. Right, so let, the easiest way to understand, and I was trying to think of a good way to make an analogy of this, is imagine you have a faucet and a sink and you open the faucet and the water drains down into the sink and then it flows through the drain and the drain goes back, in this case, to the heart. Well, the high pressure water or blood that flows out is, uh, that would be the artery system. The drain would be the veins. The veins would then flow back. Uh, that's the, the drain. Now, if there's a, an overflow and in the legs there is an overflow, that there is the lymphatic system. Mm -hmm. So you have one in and two out. And you can get, if the drain is stopped up, you have excess uh, fluid uh, that collects in the legs. It can be either through the, the, uh, the block drain or by uh, blockage in the lymphatics. So that's interesting, and, and, and what, what's interesting to me is that you're talking about what's supposed to happen normally and then what can happen to cause this. So why, why doesn't that happen to everybody? Why, why do not all people get leg ulcers? Right, so the reason why most people don't get leg ulcers and there's no swelling in their legs, whatever, is that they have a pump in their leg that actually works. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at a, a column of blood that's a six feet tall, which is all of us have, the pressure in the feet and the legs, we are standing upright, is much higher than in the head area. And the reason why we don't get leg swelling is that there's a pump in the, in the legs. The pump is uh, uh, kind of forced through by the calf muscles and there's an envelope around them that's uh, kind of uh, doesn't move, uh, doesn't stretch. And this pump is called the ankle pump. And this ankle pump works very well for most, pa most people. Um, it's where this doesn't work that, it, that there's a, a problem. Uh, I just wanted to mention that uh, other causes of, of this problem could be uh, obesity, uh, could be uh, things like some medications or heart or kidney problems. Really quick before we go, we just have a few seconds left, but I wanted you to mention what are some of the consequences of not managing 
this type of problem? What could well, happen? you can get uh, wounds. You can get serious wounds. Um, you can get the body doesn't heal these wounds so well, and occur, they occur innocuously. Um, they can cause infections, cellulitis, and sepsis, perhaps. That's the blood poisoning. So you have to treat it. The way to treat it is with compression therapy. Compression therapy. We're going to talk about that in just a little while. we got to take a short break. We're going to check back in with Dr. Goldman at the end of the show. Don't go away. There's more Wisconsin doctors coming up right after this. Stick around. Welcome back to Wisconsin Doctors. We are talking today about leg ulcers and lymphedema here at the Wounded Edema Center, part of Fort Healthcare here in Johnson Creek. And I'm joined now by lymphedema therapist Angie Adler. Angie, welcome. Thanks, nice to meet you. Yeah, good to have you with us today. So this is a fascinating topic that I think a lot of people um, maybe suffer from, but maybe they don't know what the treatments options are available. So talk to us a little bit about what is the fundamental way to treat and heal leg ulcers or leg edema? They both are treated with compression. And I think Dr. Goldman really spoke mm -hmm. about that earlier. The whole idea is we need to get that edema, that swelling, out of that leg, out mm -hmm. of that extremity, so that the body can get in there and heal. Mm -hmm. If there's a lot of edema or a lot of water, then the body can't get out there to get in there and heal up those wounds. Mm -hmm. And then if the edema is in there for too long, you actually start to get, um, kind of we'll say, an erosion of the skin. Sure. The skin starts to change, get real dry, flaky, mm -hmm. just yeah. nasty looking, really. So the, the moisture that occurs that from the, because we talked a little bit before the program started about how the reason why that happens, the reason why those wounds occur is because that moisture is looking for a way out. And Dr. Correct. Goldman talked about how people have this, this pump that uh, most people have a, a functioning pump in their ankle that will pump it back up to the heart. And for people who that pump doesn't work, the moisture just kind of collects there and then Correct. it looks for a way out. Right, and that's why we get all that weeping and we need those heavy right. dressings that Mary's talking about. The body is really lazy, like I said before, mm -hmm. and so it says, oh look, there's an opening. I think right. I'll just escape this way instead right. of traveling all the way back up to the heart. So what we try to do with our compression is push it back up mm -hmm. to the heart and get that pump actually working like it should, right. which is the calf muscle. Interesting, interesting. And so the moisture uh, over time that is kind of seepage, it sounds like it's kind of right. seeping through, will cause the skin to dry out over time, and which makes it harder to heal. Well, actually, that makes the skin become very moist, and then okay. as that wetness dries, right. it kind of leaves this film on the skin okay. that's real thick and yeah. um, just yeah. doesn't look good. Not, not pleasant, not pleasant. So can you describe manual lymph drainage and complete decongestive therapy? Well, manual lymph drainage is a technique we use in lymphedema therapy to move that fluid mm -hmm. from the extremities, from uh, wherever it's kind of sitting, to the heart, lungs, and then out of the body. And I use a light massage. It's mm -hmm. not really a massage, but it's just a real light, gentle way of pushing that fluid sure. on the natural pathways, getting the body to do what it should be doing. Mm -hmm. We just increase it to go faster with that massage. Um, complete decongestive therapy would be all of the compression socks, the compression wrapping, mm -hmm. um, the skin nail care, the therapeutic exercises things like that that they would do on their own after they're done with therapy. Okay. Now, can you treat patients that don't necessarily have these, these chronic wounds or do they have to have the wounds in order to qualify for the treatment? No, I can treat people with wounds, without wounds. And actually before the wound center joined us, we only saw people with lymphedema. And lymphedema can be in the face, the neck, um, the trunk. Mm -hmm pretty much anywhere in the body. Mm -hmm. Here at the clinic, we pretty much just do lower extremity and abdominal area. I would imagine that the lower extremities would probably be the most difficult in terms of the heart trying to pump that fluid back upwards just because of gravity. Right, Yeah. very true. Yeah. And that's where the exercises and the compression come in. Sure. So compression stockings, let's talk a little bit about that because you know uh, a lot of folks might have the stereotype in mind that this is right. what old people wear. Right. So talk to us a little bit about what, what are compression stockings? Well, compression stockings, bings, bing, um, down at the ankle you have more compression. As it goes up it gets lighter and this is what helps move that fluid mm -hmm. out. 
And you can do it in a very stylish way now. True. You don't have to have that old lady right, stigma yeah. anymore. Yeah. Um, we can use Velcro closures. Um, some of the stockings come in very light, elegant uh, fabrics, uh, patterns, different sure. colors, different designs. There's even some that have art, so you can be kind of funky with the look. Yeah. Um, I think you see a lot of teenagers right now walking around with those compression socks and then yeah. the flip-flops. Sure. So we finally have gotten trendy here. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but, uh, Look young again. Get some compression stockings. <laughs> right. And um, a lot of runners now actually wear compression stockings so they don't get that muscle fatigue after they've worked out. Interesting. And so they have a lot of sporty looks now. I wear compression socks every day and you would never know it. And that's one thing that I think that surprises a lot of our patients. Like, you wear them too? Why would you do that? Wow. For prevention. That's incredible. So that's, there's some health benefits to just wearing compression stockings. And it doesn't sound like, I mean, if, if especially if you're trying to go for prevention, it doesn't sound like there's a whole lot of side effects to just wearing compression stockings. No, it actually feels really good. Yeah. It feels like a massage to my calf and I don't have that achy, tired legs at the end of the day. Yeah. So if you ever go home at night and you see that little band around your ankle, yeah. maybe you should wear them too. <laughs> yeah, you got me interested. So it sounds to me like the goal of wearing compression stockings is to, again, get that, get the muscles pumping the fluid back up like they're right. supposed to. So Correct. that's the end goal. Correct. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. So we don't have to see you here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You want to you wanna enable and empower people to kind of take care of themselves. So. Right. Awesome. Awesome. Angie Adler, who is a lymphedema therapist, thank you so much for joining us today and thank you so much for the information. You're welcome. Glad to be here. Don't go away. When we come back, Dr. Goldman will join us again and talk a little bit about some of the techniques and the therapies that are used uh, when compression may not be appropriate. And we'll also be joined by Mary Carvalho, who is the clinic coordinator right here on Wisconsin Doctors here at the Fort Healthcare Wound and Edema Center. Don't go away. And welcome back to Wisconsin Doctors. We've been talking about leg ulcers and lymphedema here at the Wound and Edema Center, part of Fort Healthcare in Johnson Creek. And I'm joined again by Dr. Robert Goldman and also Mary Carvalho, who is the clinic coordinator here. Welcome back. Oh, thanks, Justin. Nice to see you. Always good to be here. So what are the hallmark, what is, what is the hallmark of leg ulcers, would you say? Because there seems to be so much pressure and they're at the bottom of the pressure chain with all the blood flow, uh, they have tremendous amount of drainage, really a tremendous amount. And so we use some dressings to help absorb that because left unchecked, these people, you know, you can see them, the bottom of their pants are wet, their shoes are mm -hmm. wet, they end up with it's just messy. But we, in the last few years, we've really benefited from diapers mm -hmm. and the way that they can wick um, all the drainage away. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're big. Mm -hmm. You know, some of the other ones we talked about last time were little. Sure, yeah. Well, these mm -hmm. are big and they're designed to hold a lot of fluid. We've taken these off of people and they weigh, I don't know, two, three pounds, wow. which is a tremendous amount of fluid in them. So it does wick them away in the surface area. I don't know what's on the surfaces, but it really does a good job of trying to keep them dry, and that's a big deal. I can't imagine carrying two to three extra pounds uh, at the bottom of one leg, but there are people who do. It's, it's yeah. crazy. And that's at the beginning until we get them under control, and once we really get into either um, Angie with lymphedema wrapping them or nursing wrapping sure. them, that's the situation. But it takes usually, I don't know, about three or four times coming in and wrapping it before we can get all of this under control. And then we s suddenly see a decrease in drainage. And then we can go back to the cute little dressings. Right. So what is the difference between a nursing wrap and a lymphedema wrap? Um, Angie will, with her lymphedema wrap, she uses the very short stretch and she puts quite a bit of, of tension on it. Mm -hmm. The nursing one is probably not as, we also use short stretch, mm -hmm. but we're not putting as much tension on it. Sure. We have two things that we use. One is a light version with three 
with just three layers to mm -hmm. it, and the other one we, is a full one, and we have four layers. But it's just a matter of technique. Angie has very specialized technique, and she does a great job with this. The nursing one, I mean, we do have technique too, but it's slightly different, right. and it's easier for the nurses to apply. I can teach you how to do it. You know, <laughs> you too can. <laughs> you too. Can laugh. So and for nine ninety five. There you go. Right. <laughs> Dr. Goldman, um, you know, we've talked about using compression as a way to treat edema. When is it not appropriate to use compression? Well, uh, just as Mary says, uh, we use compression. And compression is a standard of care with hundreds of articles and thousands of patients showing this. We mentioned the artery flow down to the foot. Well, if you have kinks in the hose, if this, the line from the street has blockages in it, then you have a problem because if you compress that, there are areas um, that blood doesn't get to and the tissue dies, right. and bad things happen. And, and I, I, it gets very graphic, but you really don't want it to happen because you can get dead tissue, and, and that's something we absolutely try to avoid. The other thing we uh, absolutely try to avoid is, is compressing a blood clot. Right. It's possible that people can get leg swelling from a blood clot, and if there's anything in the history, anything that we can see that might be a blood clot, we we make sure that there's a diagnostic test we do to make sure that's not there before we start to compress. Yeah, because there's all kinds of reasons why people could get uh, edema or swelling. Um, so talk to us a little bit about what some of those diagnostic tests that you use are. Right, as far as the blood clot is, is concerned, mm -hmm. and um, they could also go to the lungs and cause major problems there. The thing we use is, a, is an ultrasound test. Okay. We send them to the hospital to get uh, a ultrasound, which is, uh, they visualize this. And if there is one present and it's, and it's new, then they're treated for it, they're anticoagulated. That's, that's one diagnostic test. The other thing is for the artery test, making sure that there's enough blood flow. We have a test called ankle brachial index, which is just the blood pressure of the ankles, basically. And if it's normal, that's a good thing. There are some patients that are more complicated, like diabetic patients in some cases, where we have other tests that look at the blood flow through small arteries in the skin, and there's another one that we look at oxygen in the blood flow and in the small arteries near the skin. And we use them all together to find out that, yes, you have good blood flow, good artery flow, and that we won't cause any problems with compression. So it's, it's important to check to make sure that compression is not going to cause any further problems first. And that's right. It's, it's always tests. a two-edged sword yeah. in medicine. Yeah. And that's, that's it. Absolutely. So then, you know, we get to the diagnostic, and then we, we talked a little bit about compression. What are some other special techniques that, that you're using? Right. So imagine a wound. These leg ulcers could be present for a year or longer. Mm -hmm. And the cells in the wound are very old. They don't, yeah. like, to, they don't like to move. They're, they're really, really, really don't want to move. They're, right. they're, they're just, just barely getting along. Yeah. So you have to kind of perk them up. And uh, the way to do that is, of course, with compression. But beyond that, it can still take six months to nine months to heal this thing. Sure. So what we do use uh, various techniques uh, to make the wound seem young again, make the cells seem young again. We can use uh, a, a human placenta, or we can use uh, artificial skin grown in a laboratory to perk up these cells and give them a fountain of youth. And that helps them heal. That's interesting. Give them a fountain of youth. So much to talk about, such interesting things to talk about that you guys do here, and you really do a great job of helping fo folks who have previously not maybe had a whole lot of hope for, for their situation, so that's awesome. So um, We're out of time. Can't believe it. <laughs> Dr. Robert Goldman and Mary Carvalho uh, work here at the Wounded Edema Center, part of Fort Healthcare in Johnson Creek. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank I also want to thank uh, I want to also thank Angie for being a part of our show today. That's all the time we've got from all of us here at Channel 57. We're inviting you to live longer, live better. We'll see you next time.